Philip Kerr was born in Edinburgh and worked in advertising before taking up full-time writing in 1989. As a writer he had a stellar career, won several awards, including the C.W.A. Alice Peters Historical Fiction Award, and wrote some 40 books. As a reader, it came as a shock to hear that Philip Carr had died at the early age of 62 on Friday, the 23rd of March. Crime writing has lost one of its finest exponents. Most famous for his lovable rogue detective Bernie Gunther, Kerr was a versatile writer who turned his hand to literary crime fiction, historical mysteries and children's books, writing as P.B. Like many crime readers, I came to love Gunther and looked forward to each new installment from the moment I had finished the last one. First came across Philip Kerr's writing when Penguin published his first three Bernie Gunther novels in one volume in 1992. March Violets, 1989, The Pale Criminal, 1990, and A German Requiem, 1991, were collected together in Berlin Noir. Set in 1930s Germany and just after the war, Berlin Noir is a smart and original trilogy that has a unity of purpose. Based on more than just chronological storytelling, Kerr clearly loved researching his novels and could envision a bigger picture in his work. Kerr's novels were always a thrilling and insightful read, and he introduced one of the lasting heroes of British crime writing, Bernie Gunther, although he's German. And a moral, moral police officer working as a cripple, criminal policeman, Gunther tries to get on with his job but has to deal with the interference. From the Gestapo, taking orders from no less than Reinhard Heydrich and discovering things about Germany under the Nazis that nobody wants to learn. His adventures were fresh, fast, witty and informative, and the recreated Berlin of the 1930s seemed spot on. Although he did not invent the idea of a detective at the heart of the Nazi regime, Kerr did make the concept a popular one. He was much copied, which is a sign of the influence his writing had on others. It has become a lot more common to write crime fiction about Nazi Germany and that is because Kerr opened writers and readers' eyes to the possibilities of exploring what a policeman's lot would be like under that totalitarian rule. I must have read Berlin Noir straight through. Like most fans, I would have loved Kerr to continue with Gunther after those first three novels. But he had other ideas and several standalone novels followed over the next 16 years. Among my own favorites are Dark Matter, centering on Isaac Newton, and A Philosophical Investigation, which reveled in Kerr's love of philosophy and his sense of fun. The title comes from a book by Wittgenstein. More recently, Kerr has a produced a series of three Books featuring Pi Scott Manson set in London, 2014-15. I confess to not having read any of these, but they are popular contemporary crime stories. Finally, and to the delight of fans, Kerr returned to Gunther. In 2006 Bernie Gunther came back with a bang in. The one from the other, set in 1949. The wise cracking detective, in the classic noir, hard-boiled mold, who plays around on the dark side but actually has a lot of light about him rose again. Gunther was now older and wiser, more knocked about, healthily cynical and darkly charismatic. Kerr gave us post-war Bernie Gunther with stories that had their origins during the Second World War or revealed a little about Gunther's war. What did Bernie do? How did he maintain his integrity while working for the Nazi war machine? Gradually we came to know just what Bernie Gunther's was involved, how far his integrity could be muscled and how much he was still a man to be trusted. Of course, Gunther was used to being pushed around and taken for granted, but if you pushed him too far it was at your peril because short of getting himself killed, Gunther always bites back. In the post-war era he tangles with the British, the Americans, Peronists in Argentina, the East Germans and old die-hard Nazis. There are 12 published Gunther novels, with the latest book Greeks bearing gifts, due to be published in early April by Quercus. Kerr managed to create credible portraits of real-life characters, and he explored some of the ethical and moral issues arising from the war in its aftermath. As for Gunther, he has become one of the lasting and most memorable detectives in crime fiction. It's clear that Philip Kerr was an intelligent man who wrote intelligent thought-provoking fiction. I remember on Simon Mayo's Radio 5 live show, a number of years ago now, that Kerr was not easy to draw out on the subject of crime writing. He made the point that he wasn't interested in crime per se, but rather in character. In the case of Gunther, the novels are a study of a man who has to come through a dark period and then survives by pretending not 
to be the man he was during the war because his identity has been tarnished partly by his own actions but also by others' mischief. Of course, without character you can't sustain a series of any merit no matter how clever. The stories, and they are, I've known Bernie Gunther on and off for 26 years. I've read all of Kerr's published stories involving him, and had a lot of fun reading about his exploits. That is quite something if you think about it, a fictional life. Where someone grows older as you do in the real world. I can only say, trivial as it is in light of the human tragedy of a man dying so young, thank you for the fiction, the entertainment, the enjoyment. Rip Philip Carr, Paul Burke, March 2018